here with uh, Kurt at the uh, Kawa Visitor Centre, who's the assistant manager and the event manager, and uh, any other manager? Or? Oh, that, that pretty much covers it. That, Center, that covers it. <laughs> events, marketing, all sorts of Brilliant. stuff. Brilliant, okay, so you do a great job here. Um, it's really good to be here. Thanks for taking the time out to have a chat with us. Um, yeah, just want to, we've been having a look around the town. We've been to the Japanese Garden and the World Peace Bell. It's absolutely fascinating, great history. Can you tell us a bit about the history of Kawa? Um, so, a lot, a lot of our attractions are, are built around our connection with Japan. Um, in 1944, um, we, we used to have a POW camp here during World War II. And in 1944, there was a breakout of Japanese prisoners, um, in which case hundreds died and about five Australian soldiers also died. From that tragedy, there was sort of a, a journey of reconciliation between the people of Kara uh, and Japan. Yep. Um, and that's why we have things such as the the Kara Japanese Garden, um, you can visit the POW camp, uh, we have the hologram here which recounts the story of the breakout through the eyes of a fictitious um, young girl living in Kara at the time called Claire, and that sort of gives you a, a, a real um, perspective on, on the tragic circumstances but also the, the journey to reconciliation and peace building. Okay, okay. And the, the fascinating, one of the fascinating sites here is you've got the World Peace Bowl here, which normally sits on the capital of a country, doesn't it? Yeah, so but actually it's here in Kawa because of the work it's you've the, done. It's the only Peace Bowl around the world not located in a major city. Um, and that was awarded to us for obviously our contribution to international understanding and peace building. Yeah, uh, yeah so it's fantastic to have that here in Kara. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, there's loads to do here. We've just come back, we're, we're doing a, a recce of the air, we're going to Orange, we're in the parks, but Kawa should certainly be on people's um, list of places to come when they come out to country New South Wales. And it's not far from Sydney, is it? No, so it's, it's not very, very far, um, not a long trip over the mountains. Um, a lot of people drive through, they don't realise that there's so many things to do. Um, you wouldn't think that we have such an amazing wine region either. Um, we have a great boutique organic wine region. About 75% of our wines are organic. So we're one of Australia's most sustainable wine regions as well. And I see you've got all these uh, stocks up here as well. Oh yeah, we sell all the local wines. Very much down to Jenny, isn't it? Jenny's done a fantastic job. Jenny has job done a fantastic job. This. She always makes sure everything's spick and span and all ready to go. Um, yeah, but a lot of people come and they're just amazed by the history. They come for about a day and they end up staying for three, four nights. Um, because they didn't realise there was so much to do. Doesn't surprise me. Well, there you go. Kawa should be on everybody's list. We're going to have a look at the hologram now. Um, Kurt, thanks so much. And thanks, Jenny. And thanks, everybody here at the uh, Visitor Centre uh, for, for taking part in this. Thank nice. you. Thank Cheers. you. Here I am at the uh, World Peace Bell in uh, Kawa, and uh, you can actually ring it, so let's have a go. I've come to the Japanese gardens here in Kawa and hopefully we can uh, speak with somebody and uh, we can uh, we can learn a little bit about the uh, the Japanese culture in this in this area so uh, come with me I'm at the uh, Japanese garden here in uh, in ja or Japanese gardens here in Kawa and I'm with Shane Yep. who, uh, Shane, you, you're, the, you're the... I'm the manager. You're the manager. So, manager. And Shane's going to tell us uh, perhaps a little bit about the history of the Japanese garden and uh, also about what we can see here. Is that... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a 12 and a half acre garden. It um, was opened in two stages. So first stage was opened in 1979. Yep. Second stage in 86. Um, Largest Japanese garden in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, you know, it's been here 41 years now since it first opened. Uh, we have a cherry blossom festival uh, usually every September. Of course, this year it was cancelled. Yeah, yeah. So it's a full day of activities, lots of um, Japanese cultural activities. Yeah. Uh, we have the cultural centre as well, so there's lots of artefacts in there. Uh, 
It's very unique items and well worth a look in there. Um, the garden's based on Edo period, so early 1600s to mid 1800s. Um, we have the Edo cottage, which has a traditional tatami room in it. Um, like full Japanese, well, there's a Japanese bath in there. It's not used. It's <laughs> it's only for display purposes. Um, you know, open air tea house. Um, the garden itself is based on the um, landscape of Japan. Yep. That there's the little hill that represents Mount Fuji. The water runs east west um, into the lakes, or what yes. represents the lakes of Japan. Um, comes downstream through the rivers and streams into the bottom lake, which represents the ocean, um, yep. and all the buildings along the way represent towns and villages. Wow. Um, what, what's the what's the significance with the history, the connection with Japan and uh, and Kawa? Well. Um, Kara had a uh, prisoner of war camp um, back in World War II, um, which housed over a thousand Japanese prisoners in there. Um, 5th of August 1944, uh, the largest mass breakout in the history of World War II occurred here in Kara. Wow. Um, you know, there was, I think, 200 and 31 Japanese soldiers uh, died. Um, I think it's now five Australian soldiers that um, uh, sort of passed away because of that. Um, and um, from there, um, the Japanese war cemetery was formed. So yep. we have the only um, Japanese war cemetery in the world outside of Japan. Uh, and during the 60s, um, the Japanese government decided to bring any of their um, war dead that were in Australia uh, to the war cemetery here. Um, so the garden wasn't um, part of all of that. Uh, it was built well after that, of course, um, but has become the symbol of peace and reconciliation. Uh, between uh, certainly Kara and Japan, but Australia and Japan. The two nations are. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, pretty unique relationship, um, yeah. but uh, one that a lot of lessons can be learned from. Brilliant. Well, I'm looking forward to going to see it. Thanks so much, Shane. No problem.